With the rapid increase of inflation in the country and the price of raw goods and services growing at a rate not seen in decades, um, your client wants to feel as if what they're paying for your service, there, there's some sort of added value to it, right? So I, I say being a barber and providing a great haircut is only the first level of value that you can provide to the marketplace. It's only the first level of value. You have to understand that most clients, most customers are truly looking for more than just a haircut when they come into the barbershop, when they sit in your chair, right? You have to, you have to understand that that we get closer to people having to actually touch the client, get in the client's personal space and do all. We, we as barbers do that faster than even doctors do, right? Our, our, our business and in order to do our job properly, we have to get very close to our, our customers. Now, what does that mean as far as the value that you're providing? While there may, may be some customers who sit in your chair that don't want to talk, don't want to communicate, they just want to you know, tell you what they want, and then they just kind of want to hang out and wait till it's over. While it may be some of those people, there are more customers who will sit in your chair. They want to communicate, want to talk about how their day is. They want to talk about what's going on, the latest sports and things like that. Now, like I said before, just providing a great haircut is the lowest level of value that you can bring to the marketplace. And what am I saying? If all you do is provide a haircut, what would be the difference between you and some robotic machine that provides a service? I'm saying, what would be the difference between you and some sort of robotic machine that provides a service? If you're just cutting the hair, you're not talking or engaging with the client. You don't make the client feel welcomed, and you're you're going to have a hard time building clientele. You just are. Because for a person to allow you to enter into their personal space, you know, and, 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 allow, and allow for you to provide them the service of cutting their hair, there has to be a level of trust. And I know you say, well, how can, how can people trust places like the hair cutter? Well, because they train for customer service. There's more than that. They interact with the customers. They talk with the customers about their hair goals and all of these things. And then they have their, their other small talk as they, they go throughout the day. And so when I what I'm saying is that when you're looking to provide you're looking to provide value it's more than just a haircut oh i can cut better than them i know 
I know barbers who are average at best booked out, but they are a community idol. They do things for the community. They, they, you know, talk with the kids. They work with the kids. They work with, they work with other adults. They've given people opportunities to have jobs within their businesses and train people. They've done all of these other things. So which brings me back to my point. If they just cut the ha- cut hair, all of the other added value things, all of the other things that the community recognizes wouldn't be noticed. Do you know how good of a barber you have to be to just say it like this? You like you have to be such a skilled barber to only let your barbering skill grow with it. Like you have to be that barber. And I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not many of that barber out there. A lot of people have average to to above average skill but everything else that they do as far as their interaction with the community their interaction with the public coupled with you, you know their their uh uh what do they call it a therapist in the, in the chair they 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 provide all of this good insight and information typically you know you're you're going to be older than a lot of people when they're in the, when it, when the the children are in the chair they're talking to them about their grades they know hey man look you need to get get it together you got some opportunities take the opportunities so on and so forth they're sowing seeds of positivity you want to see your business grow sow seeds of positivity into into your clients, into your customers, anybody that you that you can get. I have I have one rule that 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 I kind of function by in communication. If a client takes a negative turn in the communication, I always try to pull it back to a positive place. I always redirect it. Look for the bright in the situation. You know, tell them that, you know, they're doing great. Or if we, you know, we have that, if we have a better relationship. Hey, I'm proud of you. So on and so forth. What's going on? Keep pushing. You'll figure it out. You'll make, you'll make it. You don't understand those little positive affirmations are something that many people desire and don't receive it just is it's 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 many people desire it and they don't receive it so to get it from your to 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 get those positive affirmations from your barber a person who you've allowed to enter your personal space and 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 they're they're communicating and they're, and they're speaking positivity over your life and your interactions and the things that you're doing. To be able to do that, I'm telling you, within reason, you can jack their haircut up because they're going to continue to come back because they see, because you're speaking positivity in, 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 into their life. You're listening to what they're saying. You have to understand, and this this is just my opinion, for most men, right? This is a male-dominant field. We have dominant, predominantly male customers. For most men, there's not a whole lot of places that they can communicate openly and freely, right? Especially, like, 
say, for example, if they have some sort of professional job, when they get home at the end of the day, they got about a three to five minute window that their spouse is going to listen to what they have to say. And really what they the, the, their spouse wants is the latest gossip. What's Jimmy doing at work? What's so-and-so doing at work? Did your manager piss you off today? So on and so forth. They're not going to get into the nitty gritty and talk to their their spouse more more than likely is not going to get into the nitty gritty and talk to them about what they actually do. Why do you think when you see television shows and and they're talking about, you you know, big wigs or bigger people doing the different things, people in, in predominantly in leadership roles, you'll see this this whole conversation and they'll be like, "Oh, they'll ask the, they'll ask the spouse, well, what does what does your 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 husband do? Oh, he works at the bank. Well, what does he do at the bank? You know, I don't really know. It's kind of this. It's kind of this. You know, if they don't have a role, it's 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 one of those things of like it's kind of this or it's kind of that." It's not clear cut, defined roles. You know, oh, he's a teller. Uh, oh, he's a loan officer. Oh, he's. But you ask them any more about it. Oh, well, what type of loans does he deal with? I don't know. I think he kind of deals. Then you get the generalities. I think he kind of deals with everything. And you, you, you want the trick. You really, you really want the trick, and you'll and you'll pick it up, and you'll feel the vibe when you're in the chair and you're asking a client about what they do and everything like that. Um, ask them, hey, you know, ask them questions about what, you know, if you don't understand the job, uh, if you don't under, uh, understand the job, ask them more questions. Ask, ask them way more questions. I have a client who is a nuclear physicist. Now, I'm going to tell you what I know about nuclear physics. Not a whole lot. And because I didn't know a whole lot, I asked questions. I understood what a physicist is. What is a nuclear physicist? He kind of explained it to me, and then he told me, like, what he does as far as his field. And the guy worked in the oil field. He created some sort of machine for the oil, some sort of system for the oil field to help with, with fracking. I didn't I didn't know that, but I'm telling you, he was so excited. And I'm ex- and I get excited when I see him because he's gonna give me such high level com- conversation about all of these different things. He's gonna give me encouraging words about what I'm doing. I'm going to give give him encouraging words about what he's doing. You know, I, I think the guy is in his late seventies. He's still working. I mean, he'll tell you, "I don't work as much as I used to, but I still work." Excited, grinning from ear to ear, to talk about what he does, because he's proud of it. He is happy about the accomplishment. And that 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 right there, this what we're talking about is a simple way to make your clients, your customers feel valued. Now, like I said, you will well the, the job thing is just one thing that I found really kind of pushes clients into this the the this comfort zone. They really get to digging in and, and, and talking about it, and they enjoy it. Right. 
But you can do that with anything, right? If a client gets in the chair and starts talking about football, oh, my favorite team is such and such. Listen, football talk in the shop is going to erupt and it's going to get the whole entire shop involved. It just happens. It's just going to happen. But even still, and I understand you may not be a big sports person, but knowing a little bit about it, you know, if you don't know anything about the sport, ask questions. I'm going to tell you, don't be afraid to ask questions. Right, every I feel like generally everybody knows what what the you know the NFL is American football. Everybody kind of knows what that is. Oh, you know, Klein gets in the chair and says, "Oh, I'm a Chicago Bears fan." Oh, you you you're not a football person. You're not a sports guy. You can ask. Have you ever been to a game? Yeah, I've been to a game. They came here to play. They 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 came to to your you know your closest sports team to play here, and I went to them and watched the game. Oh, that's cool. Have you ever been to to actually to Chicago? Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I went one time. Did you go to a game? No, it was a business thing. Hey. Did you eat? Did you eat some? Did you try some some pizza? How was the deep dish? Ah, I didn't get a chance to try it. It flows just like that. You're asking questions, you can direct the question back to something that you know, but engage with them, talk with them, maneuver with them. Right, all while doing your work. Don't 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 cut the clippers off. To, to talk, right, right, more, more snip, less lip, but stay engaged, stay engaged with the client if the client wants to talk. Now, if the client wants to talk and he's super fidgety and everything like that, hey, you know, give him a couple chances. If he moves around, hey, you you know, you don't necessarily have to say anything, but if they're, they're, they're moving around so much that you can't, you can't talk or you can't, you know, Get with them and say, "Hey, man, listen. I, you can you can talk with, or, or could you talk without moving? Right? Can you can you sit still for a second, please? Right? Throw a please in there. It's just respectful, right? Just just throw a please. Can you can you relax? Relax. I mean, let me finish what I'm doing here. I understand that you're enjoying this conversation. I am too. But can I finish what I'm doing? It's sim- it's a simple maneuver. You flow, you go with the flow of the conversation. If you don't understand something, you ask questions. Period. And what questions do you ask? Well, let me make it real simple for you. Who, what, where, when, and why? That's it. Who, what, where, when, and why? The five W's that you got taught in what? The second, third grade? Those couple of things will, will allow you to be a better and I may be making up a word here, conversationalist. When you get to a point, you don't know what to say, you're confused or whatever, go to the five W's. Pick one that applies in the situation that that you're in or this, where you're at. Boom, keep going. Keep the conversation flowing. Keep it rolling. Keep it going. And I promise you, when you develop a relationship, and and listen, I understand that this is a business transaction. 
the customer and client understands this is a business transaction. Make no mistake, right? But they're going to be a lot more comfortable spending money with a person with whom they feel like they have a level of trust. Okay? Now, there's more that you can bring to the marketplace, but I'm telling you, this one takes no investment. This one takes a little memory of the who, what, where, when, and why's. You, fig- you ask those questions, you work it out. So, guys, don't overthink it. Just remember, you know, become a better communicator. Communicate with, with everyone of what's going on, right? Communicate with everyone. Just don't, don't just think because you have great haircuts, people are going to be attracted to you and to to your services all right listen guys this is the band of barbers podcast as always thank you guys for tuning in please like comment share subscribe so we can grow and build and everything just like that all right have a wonderful night